ladies and gentlemen, more power. That's what you want, right? If the 9950X3D isn't powerful enough for you with its single V cache on a single CCD out of the two, what about if we just double things up and give you two CCDs which have V cache? Well, at least that's what the rumor is. And you can see it on screen. Well, I can't right now because I don't have my glasses on, but that's been now fixed. So this is a very interesting rumor. And we've actually heard this swirling around several months ago, actually. And this is from Chili Dog, and they've got a pretty good track record, but we'll talk about more about, you know, what people are saying online, including my own sources in just a second, but let's just go over the basics. So there are two CPUs allegedly being worked on. The 9950X3D2, 200 watts, 16 cores, 32 threads, 192 megabytes of L3, 5.6 and 4.3, and that's for the uh, boost and base, respectively. And then there's also another Ryzen 7. So this is a 9850X3D. It's pretty much the same thing as what we already have with the X3D, but what they're basically doing is increasing the clock frequency. 120 watts, eight cores, 16 threads, 96 megabytes of L3, and of course, 5.6 and 4.7. WCCF Tech do a really nice job here, actually, of... Um, compiling a comparison and uh, so i've got cat hair having cats uh, they're cute but my god cat hair gets everywhere i've got three of them so it certainly gets everywhere anyway so the 9950x3d2 uh, we can see here that it does have a slight decrease in clock frequency nothing that a little bit of elbow, elbow grease in uh PBO can't start to fix, I'm sure. But anyway, 192 megabytes of L3 versus 128. That's, of course, because you have that extra uh, V-cache. And then, meanwhile, if we just do a little bit of moseying... Where are you? Oh, there we are. The 9850X3D, as you can see here, uh, the primary difference is that we have a 400 megahertz increase, so it's a more of a premium chip. And this, of course, would be better if you're just looking to do gaming only. It'll be basically the new flagship. If this is true, I'd be interested whether AMD just goes whoop out the window with the 9800X3D. I would imagine not because this would basically mean that they could have essentially a couple of different variants. So, you, you know, they can kind of do the whole yield and binning thing. But is this true? Well, this is where things get quite interesting. Ruby Rapids, who is the editor here at IT Home, um, they say that they think it may be real, but they're not 100% certain. Meanwhile, Luzmus, I believe that's how you pronounce that. I'm possibly wrong, so if I am, please let me know. They have created, of course, a various software, you know, for Ryzen, and, well, yeah, uh, AMD have no such plans for the processor. The nearest announcement is Kraken. Uh, and then they say, well, they don't think it has a performance advantage for a typical user task or gaming. Now, I will just add real quick, I have put out a video previously, just actually quite recently, uh, testing out the 9950X3D on CCD and SMT scaling. Basically, I test out different scenarios with games specifically and whether SMT actually hurts or benefits performance and also how it benefits if you disable or enable different CCDs. I'll give you guys the spoiler, but again, I'll try to remember to link this in the description. The TLDR is that AMD software now does a really good job typically holding a specific process or a specific application, should I say, to the relevant CCD. So, for example, let's say it's a game. It will keep that to the non-vanilla CCD, so the X3D enabled one. And then, obviously, if you have other applications or maybe threads start spilling, this was, what was it? Silent Hill F, that was it. With shader compilation on Silent Hill F, I actually tested with one CCD, just the vanilla one, uh, one CCD, the Vcache one, and also both. And you can see clearly that, for example, during shader compilation stutter, the extra threads actually do a really nice job. Anyway, I am slight. Actually, no, that was in the Silent Hill coverage. Sorry, I'm giving you misinformation. I'll also link the Silent Hill coverage. Jesus. All right, guys. Well, I'm doing well. I'm remembering my own content. Anyway, the point is that uh, they believe that the processor is not being released. Now, I've spoken to sources. I'll try to like stalk more people. This news has only just come out, so I haven't really had many, uh, much time to you know speak to people. Previously, I was told that they think it might be for like Epic. You know. <sighs> basically for like home specific uses they actually mention it here as well hpc class things but 
maybe it could be for a home uh, one source told me that it could be for Ryzen but that was with the older rumors I will stalk people again to try to find out more information honestly I will be very interested if this does launch you would assume it would have a price premium I don't think AMD would be doing away with the vanilla oh, I was going to say vanilla the 9950x3D because again there's like that market segmentation it would be interesting though to see just how much of a benefit it would be I would imagine gamers probably won't benefit. Video editing, I, I'd be interested. Like, I'm sure there would be some arguments, and it would also be really interesting to see how memory bandwidth scaled on this thing. In theory, it would have around, well, it, under a year. It depends when it do, did get released. But if it was in, like, say, early next year in the first quarter, it might have, like, six-ish months before you know, Zen 6 comes to the market. But again, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Speaking of wait and see, I also want to just tackle this real fast. Um, Intel, they're doing Intel things. Um, so yeah, there have been some benchmarks actually for XE3. Now this is not the full Celestial chip, uh, just to be clear here. Although Andrew Schilling actually did mention about Crescent Islands, and this does actually have XE3P. Um, Intel actually mentions about this here. So XC3P microarchitecture with optimized performance per watt, 160 gigabytes of LPDDR5X. That's a very interesting amount of memory and a very interesting type of memory as well. So, uh, or should I say amount of memory. Support for a broad range of data types and token as a service. Again, um, so these are slightly different architectures, obviously, and in this particular case, obviously, we're looking at a GPU which is going to be essentially targeting um, Intel's Blackwell range. However, here we have a, as, in, as uh, WCCF Tech points out, the Panther Lake CPU with the 12 XE cores are 92% faster than 8 XE2 cores. And this is roughly in line with what we, uh, Intel have been pushing in terms of marketing. It also seems to be a lot more power efficient. Bear in mind, this is not actually gaming performance at this point, but you can see here that uh, WCCF Tech have done a nice job of just compiling all of the leaks. And this actually, at least in this specific benchmark, which is OpenCL, which of course, again, really does not necessarily translate to frames on screen, but it actually slightly outperforms it. It's not exactly by a lot, but it does out slightly outperform it, which I think is a really good sign for Intel's lineup. I actually have stalked some people um, regarding intel's plans for graphics and yeah it's it's interesting because i kind of thought that battle mage the high-end you know variants g31 would have been announced by now honestly um and still haven't announced it as far as i know high-end battle mage is still releasing obviously we've seen tons of evidence of it in shipping manifests not too long ago so it's it's really weird because they also have announced, or should I say teased, you know, the next version of XCSS as well, or frame generation. So it seems that, you know, in theory, they are doing stuff. I also asked, you know, now that uh, the whole celestial thing for data centers has been, you know, well, it's, it's kind of a, a slight announcement. They haven't exactly revealed all of the architectural information, have they? But um, I actually asked, are the gaming uh, celestial GPU still on and I was told yes as far as they know they are still on Intel themselves have said that they are not abandoning discrete GPUs or GPU plans despite of course the fact that they're getting buddy buddy with Nvidia so it's going to be very interesting um I really hope that we do see some evidence of high-end battle mage soon because the thing is at this point it's like the rumor is next year or early next year that's when the RTX 50 supers are going to launch so, hmm. it'll be quite interesting though, because it doesn't seem that Intel, are, sorry, NVIDIA are going to have any competition because there's no rumors, you know, nothing solid that I've seen anyway, that there's going to be a refresh of RDNA 4. There were higher end RDNA 4 variants planned for sure, but they all got canned. Uh, and obviously then they went with the monolithic dies that we've seen here and, you know, like the 9070 XT is basically the fastest GPU. So I would be interested if AMD were to do a refresh, but I don't think they're going to. I think they're just going to plow everything into uh, RDNA 5. But the good news is RDNA 5 seems like it's quite beastly. But that said, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.